In this video, we are going to solve the last problem from this exam, this calculus exam. We need to calculate this sum. So that's all we need to do. Let's start by doing the, the calculation here. So we need to calculate sum over the index k going from 1 to n of sine of kx. And we can rewrite it by using the complex exponentials. So we have 1 over 2i, and then here we have sum over k from 1 to n, e to the i kx minus summation over k from 1 to n, e to the minus i kx, like this. And we can rewrite it in this fashion, 1 over 2i summation over k from 1 to n, e to the i x to the power k minus sum over k from 1 to n, e to the minus i x to the power k. And now, in order to calculate these two summations, we can resort to the following formula. So, if we sum over k from 1 to n x to the power k, where the absolute value of x is less than 1, we can find the formula. So, in particular, the formula holds also if the absolute value of x, or the mode of x, because in this case, this is a complex number. The formula will hold also if the absolute value of x is not less than 1. So the, this, this uh, hypothesis would be needed if n is very large and actually it goes to infinity, as we will see. But let's first try to reason on this summation, this simple summation here. This is equal to x plus x squared plus dot 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 plus x to the power n. And this can be rewritten if we multiply this summation here by 1 minus x and we divide by 1 minus x we can rewrite it you can easily check that most of those terms will cancel when you multiply by this and you will be left only with x this first one multiplied by 1 and this one multiplied by x so minus x to the power n plus 1 like this and then you divide by 1 minus x and this is true also, if the absolute value of x is not less than 1, this hypothesis would be needed if we let n go to infinity, so only for the geometric series. Because then, in that case, you can say that when you let n go to infinity, this will go to 0. And it will be left only with x divided by 1 minus x. So this uh, hypothesis, as I said, is not necessary and I can cancel it. So it it's not important for us. But we can use this formula there for these two summations. So let me rewrite it below. So we have summation over k from 1 to n of sine of kx. And this is equal to 1 over 2i. And then if I apply that formula, I have e to the i x minus e to the n plus 1 i x divided by 1 minus e to the i x minus e to the minus i x minus e to the minus n plus 1 i x and then we divide by 1 minus e to the minus i x and this is equal to now we just need to calculate we have to do some calculations here so it is just algebra after all, but let me do it. I have 1 over 2i, and then I can uh, factor out e to the i x over 2 to simplify our calculations. And then here I have e to the i x over 2 minus e to the n plus 1 half i x. And then we divide this by, we also factor out e to the i x over 2 here 
then I will have e to the minus i x over 2 minus e to the i x over 2. So you can cancel these two terms. And I do something similar here. I have minus. Here I will factor e to the minus i x over 2. This will multiply e to the minus i x over 2. And then I have minus e to the minus n plus 1 half i x like this. And then you divide by e to the minus i x over 2. So you factor out e to the minus i x over 2. Here you have e to the i x over 2 minus e to the minus i x over 2 like this. Let me close the parentheses here, and you can also cancel this. And then you can rewrite the formula like this, 1 over 2i. And then you can see that in the denominator, we have something which is proportional to the sine of x over 2. In particular, here you have minus 2i sine of x over 2. And um, in the numerator, let's rewrite it like this, p to the i x over 2 times 1 minus e to the um, i and x. So we can rewrite it like this because we can also factor e to the i x over 2. And then you get minus, you can factor e to the minus i x over 2 here, which multiplies 1 minus e to the minus i and x. And then here we divide by 2i sine of x over 2, which is exactly equal to this denominator here. This denominator is equal to 2i sine of x over 2. Now let's put uh, our things uh, together. We have minus 1 over 4 if we put 2i two two I here, here, there. So we really have in the numerator, we can rewrite minus e to the i x over 2 plus e to the i x over 2 times e to the i n x. Then we get minus e to the minus i x over 2. And then I get plus e to the minus i x over 2 times e to the minus i n x. And we divide by sine of x over 2. Now we can rewrite also our numerator. You can see that if you put this together with this, you get minus 2 cosine of x over 2. You still get a factor of minus 1 over 4 here. You get sine of x over 2. And if you put this together with this, you get plus 2 cosine of x over 2 plus nx, which is actually equal to the result. So you can also rewrite the result like this, 1 over 2 cosine of x over 2 minus the cosine of x over 2 plus nx, and then we divide by the sine of x over 2. And this is the result of the calculation. And it is also possible to use some trigonometric formulas to rewrite this function in a different manner. For example, you can show, just by using some trigonometry, I will not do it here, because uh, it is just a matter of using some simple trigonometric formulas. But I have written down the formula. I have checked that this is also equal to, just in case it is useful to you, but I'm going to rewrite it like this, sine of nx over 2 times the sine of 1 half n plus 1 times x, and then we divide by the sine of x over 2. This is also another way in which you can rewrite the formula here on the left that we found, this formula here. And uh, you can check that they are exactly the same. So for example, you can start from one of these two 
in particular you can start from from this one and uh, you can show that you can show that these two formulas are equivalent you can take this numerator and show that it is related to the numerator that you have on the left here so this is also quite interesting you can see here that if n is equal to 1 for example this formula will simplify to sine of x and it is indeed true because we started remember where we started we started from this formula here so if n is equal to 1 you get the sine of x that should be the result right so this formula here is satisfied for n equal to 1 but it is also satisfied if n is not equal to 1 